Hello, welcome to my channel Judge All Nation. In this video Christian Prince will make understanding and education about Islam to all Muslims. Also Christian Prince educates Muslims that in the Lord Jesus there is truth and no other. Now let's take a look and see what Christian Prince will tell you by arguing with Muslims. Enjoy watching this video and God bless you. All right, I think we are done for today. Do we have a good time, guys? Eliza, did you do you want to call to leave Islam? Are you feeling like you want to leave Islam? If you like to call and announce that you are out of Islam, I will be happy for you. And don't worry about people, you know. We will pray for you anyway. No, I wasn't speaking in tongue. I was making, I was making the spell on you. You know. Okay, if you don't believe me now, go to the. Uh, okay, go to the living room. Try to speak to your wife. She will shout at you. And la guess what? She will say to you, "Are you happy now? You spend the night listening to this guy, this Arab guy who don't even speak good English." I cannot take it no more. I'm leaving. Just wait. My spell will work. Hello. Hello. Yes, Eliza, how are you? I'm okay. So what do you think? Your brothers, did know, they could not answer me. What we can do? I do have an answer. You have the answer? Yeah, if you go to chapter 3. Okay. Chapter 3, where in the Quran? Verse, yep. Okay, what verse? Verse 195. 195. Okay. Well, tell me about it, what it says. It says, male or female. You're both equal in reward. What does that mean? What does it have to do with our topic? You said that we had less rewards because of menstruation. No, you don't have a reward at all. You will go to hell. But in the Quran it says we're both equal. You are not equal. First of all, God, he promised men a lot of women in heaven. Did God promise you a lot of men in heaven? But he's not going to say everything. No, he said that already. He said that Allah, he promised men, women, who nobody touched their private part and trying to be, not to be rude, using the filthy language he used. So he said, Yatmuthahun, which means nobody made them ble bleed in their vagina. Correct? I don't know. Well, I know. This is the Quran, chapter 55, verse number 56. Chapter 55, but, verse number 74. Now you mentioned to me, chapter 3, not what, what verse? 195. Okay, 195, this is a contradiction. Because if women and men, they are equal, then you should have the same as the men have, correct? But we do. No, you don't. The, the, the man will have versions, you will not have versions, do you? We can ask for it. No, you cannot. Allah, he decide. You I yourself, know. you yourself, you will be in the lap of a Muslim man. And not only that, he have 72 versions and he will spend 70 years with each one of them. So if we calculate the numbers, do you have a phone to calculate with me? Okay. Okay. So when Muhammad, he said, every woman, let us open the calculator people they can help us in the chat so if every every woman uh, she will if every 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 time a, a Muslim he will have sex with his wife uh, he will spend 70 years just for the orgasm so let's do this uh, calculator let me open it why are you telling me about this to show you that this is not what uh, you know this is not uh, not what you just said because the man, he is spending his time with a lot of women, and you don't have, you have only one man. And the Quran is saying clearly 
that you will be jailed in the tent of your husband, which he have a lot of women, correct? Not me. You are a Muslim, aren't you? Not me, the um, the Hural Ain. No, you and them, and that's the Quran. Is it clear? No. What do you mean no? That was the Huris. Well, my, my friend, no, it says with them, there will be women who they are jailed in their tents. This verse doesn't say Huris or anything. If we read, we will say that all the wives of a Muslim man, they will be re in restrained, jailed inside their tents. The verse in the front of you, chapter 37, verse number 48. Wait. And do you know anywhere where the Quran says you will have men to sleep with? No. You will be sleeping with one man, and this man, he will have a lot of women beside you. Let me see one second. They're talking about maidens, not me. No, this is you included. Let us explain it. Here we go. We know, you know, you know that Muhammad, he can explain the Quran better than you and me, right? Yeah. Okay. We go and see what Muhammad, he said. And by the way, the number, the number of uh, females, this is depend in how, how good, how bad the Muslim is. The lowest, the lowest Muslim, he will have 72. The lowest. Uh, let us see here. Um, here we go. Muhammad, he said, swearing by Allah, the lowest of the people of paradise in position is the one with 80,000 servants and 72 wives, he shall have a tent of pearls. Do you see it? And then different yeah. hadith says, different hadith says that 72 wives, 70 is the virgins, and two wives of his wives in earth. But what has that got to do with deficiency in this planet? Well, what this, what you gave me have to do with deficiency in the planet too? Because if your prophet said the majority of people of hellfire, there will be women, that's mean you might be included. Because no, because our sins, our deeds are equal. How you are equal? Okay, if you are equal, then it should not be the majority of the people of hell are women. Because the Quran comes first, not the What hadith. comes first? The Quran. Okay, let us, let us go by the Quran. So, when the Quran says, according to you, the Quran comes first, not the Hadith. But isn't it the Quran says the Quran is a Hadith? Yeah, but it's the most reliable. But it's a Hadith anyway. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to look at that one first. Okay. So, according to, uh, you know, in Islam today, the man, he can marry four wives, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you said the Quran says we are equal. Okay. So how you are equal, but he can have four, you can have only one. Because back in the day, the women weren't working that much. But, so they couldn't but, provide but, uh, for their families. This is not a reason. Muhammad himself, he used to work for Khadija. Which means Muhammad himself, he is making his income from a woman. That is not an excuse. That's mean Khadija, she can have four husbands because as you see, Muhammad, he cannot make money. He have to work for Khadija. So now Khadija, she can afford it. So she can have four Muhammad. Was she rich? She was very rich. That's why Muhammad is working for her. How do you know she was rich? Well, you Muslim says that. The hadith and stories. She was the most rich woman in Quraysh. So if the woman she is, if the man, because he have money, he can have four wives, 
Well, that's mean if a woman she have money, then she have she can have four wives, four husbands. Where is the fear? If Islam making you treating you equally, then you should have four husbands too. Don't you like to have four husbands? But they were allowed because it was a long time ago in who the care? wars. Is it the Quran is for every time? You are the one who mentioned to me that Quran says you are equal. It was at that time. No, like they couldn't provide for their families because they didn't who, who, work. Who said so? I just gave you an example of Khadija. Can Khadija have four Muhammad? Yeah, but he was prophet. So what? A, a, a prophet should God provide to him, not his wife. But he did make Khadija, so he did provide her. He provided her with what? He could not even have uh, give her babies. No, he provided Prophet Muhammad what with pro Khadija. So his job is to be a prophet and she is the one who spent his, her money on him. But Allah created her. Okay, so what if Allah created her? Look. The Quran says, because men they spend in their property on women, therefore the women they have to be obedient, and even the man he can beat them, correct? No, because in a hadith it says, the best of you are those who are best to the wives. By beating them, the best of you is the one who is good to his wife. How? You force her to obey you, you give her food. That's it. Isn't it Muhammad who ordered you in the Quran, chapter 4? Verse number 34, to beat their wives if you fear their rebellion? No, he said that those who beat the wives are not the best among you. No, actually, he said the opposite. Those who complain about their husband beating them is not the best of you. You're getting the hadith wrong. Wait, show me. Okay, give me the hadith you are talking about so be sure we're talking about the same thing. Because I want to put the hadith you are choosing in the screen, not mine. Um, can I send you the link? Send me the text, not the link. I don't open link. Go ahead. I sent to you. Okay. And now you will see that the hadith what is not what you are saying. I did not get anything. Um Do you see? Let us see. Okay, hang up. Maybe if you hang up, it's going to come. Hang up. Let us see. I think you are sending it to the wrong person. I receive nothing. Try again. Are you posting it in the in Skype or in the chat? Because is she posting it in the chat? Because I was looking in Skype. Okay, for some reason I get nothing from you. Uh, can you post it in the chat? I don't see anything. <clears throat> Pause the hate in the chat. So everybody can see it.
You guys, did she post anything? You see it? Okay, let me go. Oh, Riyadh al-Salihin. Hadith number 279. Okay. But you did not post the text, right? Okay, let's see. Hold on. Let me search for this book. Let me void the screen and everybody will start laughing in a second. Let me call you back. See, the reason they are deceived because Muslims, they add things is not in the text. Hello. Okay, I want you to read for me. Mm -hmm. This is the Sahih version of the Hadith. This is, you see in the screen, it says Sahih. Do you see it? Okay. Okay. Read for me. Those who do so, that is, those who take beating to their wives are not the best among you. Many women have gone around Muhammad's family, complain against their husbands. They are not the best amongst you. Do you see it? No, it says those who take beating to their wives are not the best. This is a false translation. I'm showing you this is your Islamic website, the same website you are asking me to read from. And this is where he is coming from. This guy, this translation you see, the hadith you gave me from Riyadh al-Salihin, it says Abu Dawood, was Sahih chain, correct? Mm. So, so this is a guy copying Abu Dawood, the hadith you gave me. But this is a widow. This is the original one. And it's Sahih. It says many women have gone around Muhammad family, complain against their husbands. Those women, they are not the best amongst you. So they lie. It's the opposite. Hi. So what those women um. they are doing? They are complaining. Muhammad saying that those women who they are complaining, they are not the best amongst you. I know. So the hadith you gave me is the opposite from what they told you, and this is a false translation, the one you are reading. It's not the men who they are beating their wives are the, not the best, because the Quran gave them permission to, to beat their wives. And you will see here, Omar, read carefully. Okay. Omar here it says, uh, Omar is saying that those women are doing etc. Omar himself is the one who said that a man should not be asked why he is beating his wife. لا يسأل الرجل, Omar he said, to confirm the hadith here. And this is again from the same book you are asking me to read from. Abi Dawood. Omar reported the messenger of Allah saying, a man will not be asked about why he beat his wife. Do you see it? Mm. My is loading. Delays. No problem. It's going to open. Omar reported that the Prophet is saying a man will not be asked about why he beat. But it's not Bukhari. Okay, but the hadith you gave me is not Bukhari too. But it's Sahib Muslim. I, I, the hadith I gave you is Sahih. No, the hadith you say you gave me is not Sahih Muslim. It's a real Salihin. But it's, it says It is you sahih. who, no, it says Sahih in chain. This is not Sahih Muslim. The name of the book is Riyadh al-Salihin. Hadith number 279. This is one you'll post in the chat, correct? I know, but it says Sahih, so... 
okay, and the, and the one I'm showing you is Sahih, and this is coming from Abu Dawood. The hadith that you asked me to read, the hadith you asked me to read is from Abu Dawood book. This guy is just copying. And I just showed you what Abu Dawood he said. He said exactly the meaning. And now here, when Omar he says, uh, uh, a man will not be asked about why he is beating his wife. Uh, this is a present to us what Islam teach. A man, he can beat his wife and nobody can question. Can anyone My question? Dear, can anyone question a man for beating his wife in Islam? My dear chat making fun of me is like one in the morning. Who is making fun of you? And they're saying I'm sleepy robot voice. Okay, I guess be easy. You know, let's finish the conversation with her. So anyway, uh, guys, I, I cannot really tell you more than this. I mean, first of all, do you respect a man who beat you? No. Why not? Because it's not good. Why it's not good? I thought you, you you trust the Quran. No, it doesn't say that in the Quran. It says that in the Quran, chapter 4, verse number 34. Wait, let me check. One second. What number? Chapter 4, verse number 34. Mm. Well, it says lightly. Huh? It says lightly. Nowhere in the Quran says lightly. If the Quran is saying the word lightly, I will shave my 25 meter beard. Can you show me the word lightly in the verse? Yeah, in Yusuf Ali. This is a false translation. Is it between two brackets? Yeah. Okay, this is why it's it's false. This is why it's between two brackets. Nowhere it says lightly. And secondly, so if I beat you lightly, is okay for you? But that's the last thing to do. It doesn't matter, last thing, or, and I am the one who decides that. The, the Quran never says first and second and third. This is false. I can jail you in your room. I can force you not to have sex with me as a penalty. I have four wives. I will sleep with the rest of them and they will throw you like a rat in your room, jail you. That's and not then, very nice. Well, this is what it says. Mm. Did anyone ever did beat you? Any man did beat you before? Maybe. How would it feel? Do you like it? No. Did you call the police for him? Yeah. Why you call the police? Because you're not allowed to do that. But if he's a Muslim, he's allowed. Aren't you a Muslim too? Yeah, but it wasn't lightly. Well, nowhere in the Quran it says lightly. Here we go. A woman, she came to Muhammad and her husband did beat her until he made her skin a greener. Muhammad, he took the side of the man, and this is the hadith in front of you. They're telling me like I'm a child, but I can read the surahs if they want me to. Okay, listen. This is a woman, she came to Muhammad, and he did beat her, you read with me, Aisha, she said. Uh, she showed her a green spot in her skin, caused by beating, is that a light beating? If somebody calls you green spots in your skin? No. Okay, so why, the, why, they, why they lie to you and it says this is a green a light beating? Here we go. The man, he did beat his wife until he made her skin greener than her clothing. Did Muhammad say to him, shame on you? Read the story. He took his side. Mm. I can give you the link. I will send it to you in your Skype. You take your time and read it. I don't want you to be in, in this, um, you know, false religion, Eliza. This is garbage. There's no God will teach such, such a thing. Jesus in the Bible, he taught us that the man, he should love his wife. The woman, she obey her husband, yes. But the man, he should sacrifice himself the same as a Christ. He give himself to the church. So the Messiah, 
He taught the Christian man, you are the Lord of your house. The women, she obey you. But you should be as a Christ was for the church. He gave himself. He sacrificed himself. She is not your slave. You cannot harm her. Here, a woman, she come to Muhammad seeking rescue that her husband, he did beat her until her skin is greener than her clothes. Muhammad, he took the side of the man against the women. And he said to her, if you think you can go back to your previous husband, you better know that you cannot go back until he tastes your juice and you taste his juice. Do you see how filthy is that? What do you think of a prophet of God telling the women that this man, he have to sleep with you and he have to taste your orgasm and you have to taste his orgasm and then if he divorces you, you go back to your previous husband. Is that a good... Uh, Mm, that is to avoid divorce in the first place. What avoid divorce? The Muslim, they still divorce anyway. Here we go. The woman, she is divorced. Muhammad, he said to them, if you divorce three times, she can't go back to your previous husband, right? And this, you sleep with a different guy. So now, Muhammad, he did not save the marriage. And now the poor woman, she marry a new husband just to go back to her children. And now the new husband is beating her. There's a guy in the Egyptian TV, I showed you in the, in the other day. He married 33 or 34 women. I forgot the exact number. And he is trying to fix the relationship with their husband. That's why he married them. Supposedly he is a good guy. They pay him money to sleep with the divorced wife for a day or two or three. And then she can go back to her previous husband. I actually I can show I can search for it right now in Google. Here we go. Yeah, but it's part of the religion. This is the religion. religion. The religion says you cannot go back. You cannot go back to your previous husband. This. Huh? I already know about this. Okay, but isn't it your prophet? He says that you cannot back, go back to your husband unless you sleep with a different guy. Yeah. Okay. What about Muhammad? He punished the man for divorcing three three times. Why he's, why he's punishing the women? It's the women now she have to find a new guy. And she is the one who have to take off her clothes and sleep with a stranger. And as you see, this woman, she is sleeping with a guy she don't like. She don't want to sleep with. He's forcing her for sex. So, if the man should be punished, because he is the one who divorced, then Muhammad should say to him, you know what, if you divorce three, three, three times, you can't ever marry her again, or I will beat you. I will beat you 100 lashes. What What in the world the wisdom of forcing the woman now to marry a new husband so she can go to the previous husband? What is fair about that? Here we yeah, go. I, can... I found it in the news. I found it in the news. Okay. I will show it to everybody. But even in the Bible, you have to stay. The woman has to stay at home to look after her family. What does have to do with our topic? Does the Bible says you beat your wife? No, but I'm just telling you how it was. Well, uh, where she will go at that time? That she will work in Amazon. Women, they have to have only one job. It's their children. If they are farmers, they work in the field too. So why why you are mixing things up? We are talking about women beating. So if 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 you are against beating, the Quran allowed beating. And then you said to me that your husband, or wherever you married from, he was your husband, the one who did beat you? No. Who was he? I don't want to talk about Okay. Him. You called the police for him? Yeah. Obviously, because you're against it, right? Yeah. Okay. But if you are married and you are an Islamic family, Islamic country, according to Islam, as we showed you, a man should not be asked why he is beating his wife. So... If you call the police and you live, let us say, in Saudi Arabia, the police will say to you, well, a man should not be asked why he is beating his wife. Where does it say that? It's in, in the front room? of you. Oh, sorry, there's delays. Omar reported that the Prophet saying, which means the one who's saying that is Muhammad, a man should not be questioned why he is beating his wife. Mm. 
But it doesn't say Sahi. Ah, here we go. All right, my friend. Thank you very much for calling. It doesn't say Sahi. That's it. The Quran says that, and now it doesn't say Sahi. It doesn't say Sahi. What we can do? A Muslim saying, uh, Arwa, Arwa, saying, Kalimat Udrubu fil Ard, I imshu wa safiru wa ta'idu wa amalu. The Arwa is being small, saying, The word Udrubu does not mean uh, beat them. So look like your prophet and his companion, they are a bunch of idiots, you do not know Arabic. So if it means stay away from them, why the Quran saying already stay away from them? Jail them in their room. And if the word Udrubu Hunna, mean stay go away it says not the potatoes and if we go and read all the interpretation of the muhammadan are we going to find one of them agreeing with what you say no so are they those people they are people who speak arabic yes is the cousin of muhammad who live in the time of muhammad no arabic yes is he a cousin of muhammad yes is he the one who Muhammad, he prayed that Allah will make him the ink of the nation to explain the Quran? Yes. So all those yes, they were wrong, including your prophet. This is Ibn Abbas. I can show you Al-Jalalain, Al-Qurtubi, Al-Tabari, Ibn Kathir. So all of them now, they are wrong. And you are the one who knows what the word means. This guy is copying from a book of a woman, uh, she converted to Islam and she said, the Quran never says beat them, it says it's, go away, travel from them. <laughs>